Kikataan as a site for historical preservation. Everything that they did was designed to increase the legitimacy of the Japanese empire of Formosa. The Japanese, followed by the Republic of China, were able to control these societies against the state by integrating them into new state forms. The Japanese moved high mountain tribes into the plains, forced nomadic peoples to settle in fixed villages, created land cadastres that determined the boundaries of reserved lands, and as communities gelled into place, required them to elect tribal councils with chiefs. This was a big change. The Amis were quite capable of adapting their age rank system to this new political reality by giving political positions to members of the older age ranks. The ROC transformed everything again, mostly by privatizing reserve land. When industrialization happened, this led to a loss of people to the cities, and especially the Amis. Out of the 550,000 indigenous people in Taiwan, about half are Amis, and probably more than half of them live in the cities. They move around wherever the jobs are. The ROC also replaced tribal councils with elect township governments and community development associations. This brought about inequality in the villages between families and created opposing factions. This is why we see one group of people in the film uh, from an NGO taking over the project with Academia Seneca, whereas the family of the Kakita'an have their own interests. And then we've got the township that opposes the reconstruction, and then someone registers it as a heritage site. Post-colonial democratization, ironically, this takes them back to certain Japanese-era colonial compromises, a dynamic that we can see across Taiwan. The Amis, like other groups on Taiwan, are also challenged by other kinds of change. The most obvious is religious change. This began in the Japanese era in some places, but accelerated in the 1950s, where entire communities converted en masse to Christianity. The Presbyterian Church was brought to Taiwan by Canadian and Scottish missionaries, notably George Mackay around here, whereas the Catholic Church was brought in by different orders of priests, and some came from Quebec. Uh, the Amis and other coastal peoples have, however, kept alive their traditions of shamanism and mediumship much more than the mountain groups. Um, in all of the village, Protestant groups have tried to eliminate traditional rituals. Catholics were a bit more open to syncretism. Nowadays, we can see that the churches are, have a lot of power, but we also see in the films its attempt to bring back the souls to the village. Maybe we can talk more about shamanism afterwards. Uh, but there's quite a bit to say about the, the shamans and how they manage to survive in the plains, but they don't survive as well in mountain communities. Um, I think that it's important that there's a certain resilience of culture. Uh, these communities in Taiwan are often called upon to bring back their cultures. In 2005, Taiwan's legislative UN passed the Basic Law of Indigenous Peoples, which was followed in 2007 by the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. In Taiwan, there were already mechanisms in place for cultural renaissance under funding programs for community construction run by local NGOs. In this context, indigenous groups like the Amis are called upon to protect their cultures and then the state funds them for their projects. In Taiwan, this has led to a situation in which there's, a lot of, there's money available for groups that want to do rituals or recreate traditional architecture. Sometimes these can become tourist attractions, although as we see in the film, local communities also find deep cultural meaning in these projects. Leaders among the Amis and other indigenous groups hope that the new legal framework will help them assert autonomy vis-a-vis -vis the Republic of China. In the film, we see them try to assert their rights through land claims, as well as their demand to get their cultural artifacts back. The film appropriately ends with no tight conclusion. We cannot know if the reconstruction of the Kakita'an will bring back the souls of the Amis and lead to a real cultural renaissance. In fact, we cannot even know if Taiwan can maintain its autonomy vis-a-vis -vis the People's Republic of China, a country that is expanding its military capacity in the South China Sea and has not renounced its unattained claim to Taiwan. 
Amidst all of this uncertainty, some people in Taiwan, Amis or otherwise, may hope for a return of the souls of their ancestors, even a return to innocence, but that goal is ever elusive. So, thank you. Aran.